Hello, welcome to the University of Manchester. It's great to have you here and we're so pleased you decided to join us to study languages. We hope you settle in very quickly to university life and enjoy getting stuck into your studies and exploring your new city, even though at the moment things don't look quite like they usually do. Welcome also to the School of Arts, Languages and Cultures. My name is Lise Mary MacDonald and I work with Shadi Narus, the manager of the Residence Abroad and Placements Office, to facilitate the Residence Abroad year you will complete as part of your degree programme. Today I will introduce you to the options available for studying or working abroad and will tell you more about the sources of support and information available to help you as you prepare for this over the next two years. So, you've only just arrived in Manchester and I'm here to tell you all about how you can escape it again. Your residence abroad may seem quite far away at this stage, but it's definitely worth giving some thought to, even now. While you don't need to take any formal steps towards organising it until next year, we would still encourage you to think about what you may want to do for your residence abroad. Study is an option available for all languages and would entail completing a semester or a year studying at one of our partner universities or language schools across the globe. We have over 100 partner institutions, so there's a lot of choice available, and this list is ever growing. It's important to mention that studying is the only option available for Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, and most Russian studies students. For students of French, German, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish, working abroad for a semester or a year is also an option, and some Russian studies students may also be eligible to apply for work placements. Teaching English abroad as part of the British Council's English Language Assistant Programme is also a possibility for those studying French, German, Italian and Spanish. And many students apply for this programme each year. Some students choose to combine a semester of studying with another of working. But no matter what option you choose for your residence abroad, please start to give careful consideration to the costs that would be involved. Moving abroad can be quite expensive. And depending on where you're going, the price of air travel or day-to-day -day living may be quite high. There will no doubt be many exciting trips, meals and activities you want to make the most of while you're away. So we definitely recommend that you start saving as soon as you can to make sure you're able to do all the fun extras you want to, as well as paying for the basics. In your second year, we will run a series of, brief of briefings designed to give you all the information you need to prepare for residence abroad. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, you don't have to take any steps to organise your placement as yet, but you may wish to start researching your options. There are many ways you can do this, but if you're interested in studying abroad, then finding out more about the different institutions we have partnerships with is the best place to start. We have information about each partner university and language school on my placement, which is the platform we will use to record and manage your residence abroad plans. You can find my placement through my Manchester. There is also a site for residence abroad on Blackboard in the My Community section. This contains a huge amount of information about residence abroad, including the incredibly useful student experience questionnaires. These are questionnaires previous residence abroad students have completed to give an account of their study, work or ELA placements and pass on their hints, tips and pearls of wisdom. So definitely check these out. You can also use the residence abroad site to research the types of work placements that might be available. Why not take some time to browse through the work abroad folder where you'll find a list of employers that have advertised placements in the past or where students have worked in previous years. Our students have taken up roles with a really diverse group of companies and organisations, from small NGOs and startups to famous international corporations such as Vogue, BMW and PwC. CareersLink is another great place to find live, ad, live job adverts. And if you're interested in teaching English abroad, then the British Council's ELA website will be your most useful source of information. Also, why not start talking to your friends and family 
to see if anyone may be able to put you in touch with potential employers. If you don't ask, you don't know what opportunities might be out there. Finally, we're here to provide information, advice and guidance to help with any aspect of your residence abroad, both before, during and after your placement. We're also here to give general support, so always feel free to get in touch at any point with your questions or concerns. You can email us via residenceabroad at manchester.ac.uk and can also call our office during our opening hours, which are Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Hopefully, in the not too distant future, you'll also be able to visit us in the office again for a face-to-face -face chat. This concludes our brief introduction to Residents Abroad. We hope you enjoyed finding out more about this great opportunity. Thank you for your time and welcome again to Manchester. We look forward to hearing from you and getting to know you a bit more over the coming years.